Hello my friends, welcome back to Keto in the Chaos. My name is Tammy and on this channel I like to share all my tips and tricks on how I initially lost over 200 pounds with diet alone and how I'm struggling to maintain a healthy weight. If that's what you're looking for, don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring the bell for more videos like this one to inspire you to get started. Top three tips. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I am so excited that you're still checking in on me and all these years of keto ups and downs, that is my crazy life. Um, in this video, I am sharing how week two went on my fall 2023 keto cut. In my last video, I explained how I had gained some weight and I was unable to lose it over the summer, which is usually my plan, and so I am attempting to lose weight in the fall, which is a lot more complicated. Um, I've been pretty good at keeping my foods in check and keeping everything tracked, so at least there's that, and so these videos are going to be showing you my progress over time. Hopefully, things are gonna be looking good. Another aside, if you're new to the channel, you may not realize that I have a fatty tissue disorder called lipedema, which I did not know about in the beginning stages of my journey. In fact, I did not find out about my lipedema issues until after I had my skin removal surgery two years ago. And so I have been on a journey of discovery of finding out a lot of new things about myself, including that I have fatty tissue in my legs that is not reducible by um, dietary means. The only way to have it removed is through a certain type of liposuction that I'm not really thinking is important enough for me to do. Also, I can't afford it. Also, the pain. No, thank you. Um, and so I also struggle with lymphedema, which is a completely different condition that I gained in my life post skin removal surgery. It's actually more common than you might think. And I struggle with retaining fluid um, in my belly, because of that and also in my legs because of the scar tissue that was caused by the skin removal. I'm still super happy that I did the skin removal even though I am bigger. I still have better control over my muscles and I feel like I look cuter in the clothes that I'm wearing even though I'm a bigger size. And that has been a blessing in and of itself. So even though it has been a struggle, I think honestly I am almost 49. It's gonna be a struggle. That's just the way the cookie crumbles when you're going to the later stages of your life. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna be showing you all my weigh-ins, everything I ate, I, I filmed all of my food, um, any interesting things I did this week, exercise clips of me at my dance classes, and anything, of course, traumatic that happens to me, I'm probably gonna tell you about it. Um, that's just how I do. I also have ADHD, possibly autism. I am on this journey of figuring myself out and my brain. Um, some people have patience with that and others don't, even in my real life. Um, I'm seeing things differently through different eyes, seeing people and relationships differently, and the whole thing is kind of hard. So right now, I'm just trying to be as honest as possible that I am doing the best that I can, and I hope that you guys will stick with me and we can all tackle this journey we call life. Okay, so the first things first, I had someone request me talking about perimenopause and some of the symptoms that I have noticed. I have really struggled to find any information about perimenopause that even applied to me in, on the internet. I've done the searches and I feel like, isn't this something like that people should tell each other about? Why isn't this talked about more? Um, of course, you know, I'm a talker, so I, I talk about it more than most. Um, and so I will tell you some of the symptoms that I have discovered. Um, it started actually when, on, when I went on Zoloft back in May because I was trying to help a little bit with the anxiety that my stimulant medication is exacerbating in my life. We tried it. It did not work. I had all of the side effects, but I did have other side effects that weren't listed or but but were talked about on the internet including late period and hormonal things so honestly at first i thought it was all because of just the medication and i thought when i went off of it that i would have like go back to normal i guess i should say um but that has not been the case so i'm starting to connect some of these things to possible perimenopause so yeah the delayed cycle as in like just two, three days late, just long enough to make me go, hmm. And when I'm late on my cycle, when the cycle finally starts, 
extreme nausea, which I literally hate nausea more than any feeling on the planet. I literally will do anything to avoid it. And I was pretty upset that all of a sudden I felt like I was make that I was having a baby. If you know what I mean? I literally felt like morning sickness and I kept walking around going, who, why did nobody warn me that morning sickness was a sign of perimenopause? So now, you know, um, that one was like, blindsiding me. Um, I've been, I've, I've been fatigued, but I'm always kind of fatigued, you know, with between ADHD and trying to do keto and managing electrolytes and all the things that I do all the time. And my hormones going up and down all the time. I retain water and I lose water. My ability to stay like awake always has been kind of inhibited. I sleep well, but I just, I crash. And so the, um, stimulant medication is helping me to kind of get through those feelings. And the medication level that I'm on now seems to be working without too much anxiety and without having to take an anxiety medication. In all honesty, I have never been a medications kind of person. I have not taken any medication until last year when I was diagnosed with ADHD. And so this whole thing feels overwhelming to a degree of sometimes I just want to like throw it all out the window and just be my crazy self. Um, but then of course now I'm seeing myself through the lens of other people and I just feel like that's just not fair to other people, especially since as I've gotten into perimenopause, my ADHD symptoms are dramatically worse, which is what pr prompted me to start down the road of getting diagnosed in the first place. The number one worst one is my memory. I have always had a terrible memory. From a child, I have a terrible memory. Um, I could remember stuff for school and phone numbers and things like that. But when it came to like recalling people's names, recalling where we met, um, I always, it was only the people that I knew and saw every day that I could easily remember. I still struggle with this. In fact, I was sitting in church yesterday and I had a very good friend next to me, someone I know really well, sometime, someone I have talked to many times in church. She is a little bit vision impaired and I wanted to sign her name for her for on the roll and I could not tell you her name. It was awful. Um, I literally just had to be like, oh, this is the role, sweet sister. Here's where you sign your name and just have her sign it. What I really wanted to do a service for her because I couldn't remember her name. And of course, as soon as I saw her write it down, I went, oh, right, I know her name. But for some reason, my memory recall is just so much worse. And frankly, that's terrifying. Um, I'm, I'm like, my kids already are really impatient with me. They already are, they already don't view me like they should as a mom. I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like, they don't really have a lot of patience for my quirky personality. They don't much like it. And I can't be someone that I am not. And really out of all of my children, only one of them is kind of like me. The rest of them are all not not crazy. Um, I, I mean, they all have their own things and most of them have ADHD, but their ex exhibition of it isn't highly emotional and overreactive. And so I don't know how to fix that. And it seems to be worse as I'm heading into perimenopause. My emotions are even more irreg irregular. And while the stimulant medication does seem to help a little bit, it doesn't fix it entirely. And if anything like gets brought up, that I'm not expecting and I haven't had time to like digest, I will react wrongly. And then my adult kids literally say, that's why we can never talk to you. We're afraid to talk to you because you're gonna overreact. And, I'm, and I try to explain, but I can't help it. Can't you love me with the overreaction and just accept that that's how I process and that in five minutes I'll get over it and I'll be fine. Like you can't just expect me to be different. Like. Do you not know me? I've been this way my whole life. And so it's kind of frustrating to find that my own family, excepting my husband who is like a saint, can't seem to make, um, what's the word? Accommodations for my mental health, even knowing that I cannot change it and that I have a diagnosis, they still have very little patience for me. And it makes me feel very, very frustrated and embarrassed. And I, I wish I could change it, but I can't. I've tried with the therapist and it, I, I, we're going nowhere. Like I'm not improving in those areas. 
and I honestly don't know how, but you know what? It's what makes me awesome too. Like I'm so excited for them and I get excited to be with them and I'm like obsessed with them and I want to support them. And then they act like they don't want my support. It sucks. <laughs> so that's the memory loss and overreacting. Um, my weight gain during ovulation when I do ovulate seems to be way worse, but may just maybe a judgment call. Um, I've been waiting for that whoosh on the scale and I haven't had it, which I'm kind of going, Ugh. well, I mean, I'm not gonna tell you about the, that. We, we talked too long already. No more about the perimenopause. If, if I think of anything else later, we'll bring it back up, but that's where I'm sitting right now. So basically nausea was the one I wasn't expecting, fatigue, overly emotional, forgetting everything, Lo oh, losing everything. Like I used to be able to keep track of things, even in my mess. And I'm always searching for things, especially my phone or my keys. If I don't put them right where they go, <sighs> so frustrating. In fact, there have been so many days where I'm just like wasting time searching for my phone. I really need to stop putting it down regardless. Okay, so that was that for that. Yeah, I'm glad you, hopefully, if you didn't want to hear that, you skipped it and now you're to the weight loss part. Um, I'm just going to put in here, I decided last week I did that, the weigh-ins all together and I didn't put them like with the food that I ate and I didn't really like that format. So I'm going to go back to just putting them all in a row. So I am going to put the food I ate, the weigh-in, then the food, then the weigh-in, and then the food, exercise, you know, like all in order so you can kind of get an idea of what my, what my week looks like and how it affects the scale. I don't trust the scale anymore though, to be honest. The scale is like driving me crazy. But I did really well anyway and I'm not gonna let it get me down. So let's get into the nitty gritty of the video and we'll come back and talk about that. And I'll tell you about um, whether I've lost anything in measurements, how much, we'll talk about how much I lost after we see all the clips. And I will, at the very end, show you my 360 to see if there's any visible change, if that's what you're, with that which what you like, if that's at the very end. All right, so let's get into it. Alrighty guys, it's almost four o'clock on Monday and I am having my first meal of the day. I don't normally eat this late. I try really hard not to, but the problem is, is that now I'm trying to film videos for you guys on Mondays and that cuts into my homeschool time so then it takes a little longer to finish homeschool and I'm super busy with the kids so I don't take time to eat then and then I have to do all my chores, do the dishes, feed the chickens and by the time I finish everything, well today that's where I was at. So yes, I'm starving but whatever. I mean, it is what it is. I can't, if I eat in the morning, it's not a problem. Like, but the problem is, is then I'm hungry, hungry, hungry all day. It's the weirdest thing. If I don't eat, it's better. So anyway, I am having, um, lemon sludge today. It's looks pretty sad and sorry. Cause I ran out of whipped cream and I have to use 2% Greek yogurt because they were out of the regular 0% at Walmart. And I'm just running out of everything right now. We're just to the end of the week and I don't have money until Friday. So, um, this is 2% Faye Greek yogurt, 250 grams mixed with 20 grams of keto chow vanilla cream, um, protein powder. I, I put for creaminess, I put in 40 grams of half and half cause I didn't have my Creo brew this morning. Usually I'll have about 40 grams in my Creo brew, but I, I put it in this instead. And when I'm not using half and half, I usually put almond milk to thin it out. And then I've got 30 grams of blueberries on top, 20 grams only of sugar-free great value brand whipped cream, which is a bummer. It is what it is. And an egg taco. I made this with 40 grams of mozzarella cheese on the bottom, put an egg on the top, pulled it up like a taco. Boom, done. And that is going to be my first meal of the day.
guys, it's after 10 o'clock. I just got home from Jazz and I am tired. <laughs> um, but I am gotta eat some dinner, so here is my last meal of the day. I'm having chicken enchilada. I don't even know what to call it. Chicken fajita taco salad. So one package of Quest chips, eight ounces of chicken breast, 100 grams of bell pepper, 30 grams of onion, 20 grams of cheddar cheese, 20 grams of sour cream, 60 grams of salsa, and 60 grams of tomatoes. That's going to be my last meal of the day. Alrighty guys, it's a little after 3 o'clock and I'm about to have my first meal of the day. It was another crazy day. Just like yesterday, it is what it is. So far I've survived, but I don't know how much longer I can do that. Anyway, I am having some Faye Greek yogurt mixed with um, this one. I did birthday cake keto chow. I did 15 grams mixed in 40 grams of almond milk and two squirts of acai berry mio water enhancer because I'm out of my lemon and I'm out of whipped cream. So there's none on top. Having the same egg taco is yesterday and just for fun i'm gonna eat a few of these with my yogurt baked believe chocolate melting wafers that's gonna be my first meal of the day well we were just heading out for clogging and we got some bad news phineas was on his way home from the chiropractor with eloise and they hydroplaned and apparently rear-ended someone so i am heading over there to see how bad it is Hope that it isn't that bad. Hope that the car isn't totaled because we are literally still making payments on that car and we just barely got it. <sighs> I'm not thinking about that. I just hope the kids are okay. Finn says they are, but you know, you always feel worse tomorrow. And so we're gonna be late for dance if we make it there at all. At this point, I'm just like, can we just, can this day just be over? I haven't even talked to you guys about anything. It's been fine of a day. It's just, just a lot of things financially that are stressing me out and now have another one yay but at least the kids are okay that's all that matters and I'm gonna head over there and see what's what which is luck seriously the face tells it all the face tells it all I did my best ah oh, dude Do you give your driver's license and insurance yep you scared yeah that I, you're gonna hurt tomorrow that's bad probably did the airbag go off nope no, well, that's really. It was a hard hit. I'm so surprised the airbags did not go off. I can't even believe it. But, oh my gosh. I came around the corner doing like probably like 45. Just down that hill. Yeah, and then and everybody slammed on their brakes, and then and I you couldn't. Break, and then the brakes locked up. <laughs> yeah, because so of the I wet road. Them, and then they wouldn't unbrake. So I tried to swerve, and then there was a guy there. So then I just turned as much as I could, so it hit my side. Ah. Oh. Well, you did the best you could. Stuff happens. Okay, it's been a bit of time since the crash happened. It's been a couple of hours. Definitely had our uh, cry festivals happening. Um, it's pretty rough. The people we hit were kind of rude. Treated Finn like someone who was not gonna bother to, you know, fix his damage that he created, tried to guilt him, making them say like, if they were in a smaller car, they would be dead, stuff like that. And I'm like, what about my kids who could have been? It was an accident, they hydroplaned, there was nothing he could do, he tried to avoid hitting you, he barely hit you, you have a tiny dent in your precious little Jeep, but she wanted to make sure we were gonna pay, fix it. Anyway, we didn't end up getting to go to clogging because of all of it. Finn was quite upset. He's blaming himself. And now we're without a car. I don't know. I'm going to have to drive them to school. I am so overwhelmed. I already have so much driving and so much homeschooling and so much dance. Without Finn's help, I, I am at a loss. And without him having a car, now he has become dependent on me. So we're stressed and crying and upset. We literally just bought that car. We just registered it yesterday. <laughs> the plates were off of it because we hadn't replaced the new ones yet. Still had the paper tags in the back. We haven't even finished paying it off. We still owe the people $300 for it that we haven't finished paying off. And now we gotta find another car.
I just keep telling myself that at least they're okay. Eloise is hurting pretty bad. Her neck hurts, her back hurts. Finn seems mostly just emotionally wrecked for, you know, beating himself up for letting it happen, even though there really wasn't anything he could do. They didn't even give him a citation. So if that means anything to you, they didn't give him a ticket. They gave him a warning. So we will have to pay to fix the lady's car and our car is toast. We only had liability on it. So we can't uh, come up with the money to buy our own new car, new old car. Cause uh, we only paid $1,200 for the car, which is why we only had liability on it. So all in all, it could have been worse. Anyway, I've got something in my throat or something and I'm driving. <laughs> Literally not even looking at you because I gotta watch the road and let's not get in a ca another car accident, please. Because I really can't afford another car. And plus I love this car so much. It has a turbo and I, I like it. So anyway, we'll talk to you guys in a while. Alrighty guys, it is Tuesday night and it is 8.30. I'm supposed to be at my clogging class right now, but I am not there. I've just been crying. And so I'm going to eat now my dinner. So here we go. I'm going to have 10 ounces of top brown steak, 200 grams of yellow squash with 30 grams of onion and six grams of butter. Um, I tracked these for earlier for eating at the dance studio and I just didn't feel like eating earlier, but I know once I start eating this, I'm going to want more food. So I might as well do it, do it since I already tracked it. So I'm going to have one crust cookie and this yummy fruity cereal bar from Built. I don't know if it's available, but these are pretty decent and that is going to be my last meal of the day. Alrighty guys, it's 12.30 on Wednesday and I'm trying to eat earlier today because now I have to go pick my kids up from school earlier and I won't be able to eat. So I am having same thing as yesterday. This is 2% Faye Greek yogurt, 250 grams, mixed with two squirts of acai berry Mio water enhancer and one or 15 grams of per keto chow. Oh my gosh, birthday cake flavor, I think this time. And then an egg taco, 40 grams of mozzarella cheese, and an egg. That's going to be my first meal of the day. Howdy, guys. It is 7 o'clock on... Why do I forget the days? Wednesday. And I just got home um, after my son was in the accident last night. Now I have to drive him to school and back. And I have to pick him up from school. And I have to take him to work. And I literally drove for almost six hours today without hardly a break. Um, so I kept meaning to have a snack in between while I'm, it's all the driving and never quite made it happen. In fact, I'm digging through my purse trying to find said snack so that I can show you what I'm gonna eat because I didn't think about that before I started recording. Found it, finally. Um, I have a Cupcake Sprinkles Built Bar and a Quest chocolate double chocolate cookie. I'm probably going to eat those now because my husband is getting groceries right now and everything, it's going to take him a long time. We're going to put everything away and making dinner and I haven't tracked anything and I'm just literally starving. So I just know if I don't eat something, it's going to be bad later. So I'm going to go ahead and eat these while I'm waiting for him to get back from the grocery store and then I will determine what I'm going to have for my final meal of the day. I'm kind of in a way, so we'll see. This is really hard to do when things go wrong. So there you go. And that's going to be my second meal of the day. Alrighty guys, it's nine o'clock. I ended up making my own kit, my own food and the kids food because Dave was working on cars. So I am having finally my last meal of the day. I'm having 150 grams of broccoli topped with 120 grams of Valfredo sauce. On top of that, I've got some real good food, chicken nuggets, 200 grams, and 60 grams of tomatoes. That's going to be my last meal of the day. It is about almost two o'clock, a little bit before two, and I'm gonna finish off my first meal of the day. I'm here at the library. I'm gonna have a Atkins cookie and a Built Bar. And that's gonna be second meal of the day. 
Alrighty guys, it is 10.30 on Thursday. I survived. It's a miracle. And I had to walk home in the rain two miles from the school to my house in the dark and the rain because we had no car to drive me home, but it's fine. I needed to go to parent-teacher conferences. So I came home and I made myself dinner and this is what I made. I have fresh pumpkin, 200 grams of fresh pumpkin with salt and pepper and five grams of butter, topped by a hamburger gravy that I made with eight ounces of 93.7 ground beef, 30 grams of onions, 33 grams of green, uh, of frozen peas, and then I added in a little xanthan gum and bouillon to make the gravy sauce, and on top, cheddar cheese, 30 grams. That is going to be my last meal of the day. That dinner was delicious. I really missed having pumpkin. I'm going to eat that some more. It was a cold day, so I was in the mood. And I decided I'm going to have some dessert. I'm going to have Rocky Road Built Puff. And that's going to be my last food of the day. on Friday. Um, I actually took this lunch. I don't know why I'm pink. That is weird. Woo. Um, I took this lunch to the park, um, made it for the park, and then I didn't feel like eating when we were at the park. And so now I'm home and I'm just going to chill out in my bed. Got a couple hours before dance. So I'm going to try and edit a video a little bit, but I'm going to eat really quick. And so I'm going to show you what I'm having. This sandwich, still in the baggie. Um, I made this with two pieces of Oro Wheat Keto Bread. Um, 39 grams of chicken breast lunch meat, and I think it was 30, 37 of ham. One piece, I wish you could see because I can't, but there's one piece of cheddar jack cheese in here, and 11 grams of mayonnaise, some mustard, and 24 grams of tomato. Okay, and then I'm also going to be having an Atkins protein cookie, the peanut butter one. These are so chewy. I love these just for a quick snack and they're not as many calories as the Quest ones. Um, the Quest ones are like two, some, 240, I think. These are 150, so I like that a lot better. Um, and a Bilt Bar. And so that is going to be my first meal of the day. Alrighty guys, it's 9.15 and I just finished making myself dinner. I am having 200 grams of zucchini noodles topped with 125 grams of Lucini marinara. I've got 30 grams of mozzarella cheese. And on top, I've got 250 grams of Real Good Foods chicken nuggets. And that is going to be my last meal of the day. Alrighty, guys. It is 2.22 on Saturday, my lucky number. And I'm about to have my first meal of the day. I made a... Egg taco, like usual, 40 grams of mozzarella cheese and an egg. And then I made my regular sludge. But today I used rye marshmallow protein powder in it, which is kind of fun. It's I've been playing with this flavor a little bit, and it's pretty, de pretty decent. Um, so I have 25 grams of the marshmallow rye protein powder and 250 grams of Greek yogurt. A capful of lemon juice, two squirts of lemonade, meal, water enhancer, and 40 grams of almond milk. Then I put 40 grams of blueberries on top. That's going to be my first meal of the day. Alrighty guys, it's 8 o'clock on Saturday and I am editing photos right now. And this is going to be my final meal of the day. This is chicken fajitas. So I've got one package of Quest chips with 6 ounces of chicken breast, 30 grams of cheddar cheese, 100 grams of bell pepper, 60 grams of tomato... There, you can see it better there. Um, 20 grams of sour cream. I'm just looking at it, trying to figure out what's on here. Uh, I cracked it all, but I forgot. Oh, salsa. 60 grams of salsa. Um, and some green onion. I think that is everything. And it's going to be... Oh, lettuce. There's some lettuce on there. And that's going to be my last meal of the day. Alrighty, guys. It is 4.30 on Sunday. And yes, I have not eaten yet. 
This is, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, it's my son's birthday party today. My Phineas is turning 18, and my son, who is in Indiana, turned 25 yesterday. So we are celebrating, basically celebrating Phineas, but also Sullivan tonight. Um, so I need to eat because. I don't know, maybe I should have just had it all in one big meal, but I didn't. I decided I can't make it to clean the house and get ready for the party in two hours. <laughs> okay, whatever. You didn't need to know all of that. Uh, let's get on to the food. I am having one, well, exactly the same macros as yesterday with the marshmallow. I didn't stir it very well, though, so it's lumpy, but whatever. Same macros as yesterday, keto. Oh, my gosh. Sludge with marshmallow and lemon and same exact egg and cheese and a bill bar that's gonna be my first meal of the day all right guys it's birthday party time this is my food for today Ooh, that's my kid i'm having 150 grams of green beans with five grams of butter and two chicken thighs so that's gonna be my last meal of the day until i have my ice cream for dessert all righty guys here's my dessert it is ice cream i made it with one scoop of marshmallow rice protein powder, one half scoop um, keto chow chocolate. I put in some cocoa powder and some xanthan gum and 40 grams of half and half and some almond milk. And then I added a mix in of Baked Believe, 12 discs of the Baked Believe um, chocolate melting wafer things. And that is going to be my last meal of the day. All right. So that was a lot. We had a lot going on. Um, I didn't go to my class on Tuesday, my clogging class, because my son seriously got into a terrible accident. Thankfully, he's okay. My son is doing really well. He's doing okay emotionally. He struggled a couple of days with guilt, but we, we reminded him a million times that we did not blame him. This was not his fault and that he did everything he could to protect his sister and himself. And we are just so glad to have them. But we are down one vehicle and without way to buy one. So, you know, stress. And I have to drive more, which, you know, stress and all of that kind of thing. So ah, I'm pulling my hair out a little bit, but it's okay. I, did, I couldn't go to my class that night, even though I physically could do it like I time wise I could have done it I just emotionally could not go because it's been a week then he also had his birthday party on Sunday night which was last night and today is his 18th birthday he is child number five my middle child I have four more who have not yet gone into the crazy world of adulthood I hugged him really really tight last night so tight I literally we both felt our backs pop and I just hugged him and I just said please tomorrow when you turn 18 don't stop loving me <laughs> I am so scared of my kids turning into adults because they like seem really, really cool with me when they are teenagers. And then when they turn to be adults, they seem to not like my personality anymore. It's like they put up with it and then they don't have to. And so, and then they tell me so. And I just, with my rejection sensitivity, it's literally killing me. It's literally killing me right now. But regardless, He's 18 today, and he promised me he would not stop loving me overnight, so <laughs> fingers crossed. Anyway, let's get into the nitty gritty here. Okay, so the scale. <laughs> Started out with Monday at 218.9, then Tuesday 219.6. Wednesday, I still went back down to 218, which is shocking considering how stressed I was. But then all of a sudden, I had a little bit of a drop, which was a relief, 216.1, 216.9, and 216.1, and then back up to 217.4 for a total for an average of 217.5 which is down 0.8 of a pound for the week 0.8 when you're eating basically nothing it kind of does not feel fun to lose 0.8 of a pound but you know what I'm just gonna not stress over it and keep going because I know it's gonna be harder this time Number one, perimenopause. Number two, lipedema. Number three, lymphedema. I just have all the odds stacked against me at this point. It will be a literal miracle if I can get much smaller. Um, I would love to get back in Wonderland again. I need to be back in Wonderland. I'm praying to get back in Wonderland because I just need that feeling of being okay. And right now I'm not feeling okay. Also my Nutcracker costume is really too tight in the bust. And while I can wear it on stage, I think I will be self-conscious. So as sad as I am to lose these beautiful girls that have grown, <laughs> the only good thing about gaining weight after having tummy tuck, I kind of need them to shrink. So I'm kind of hoping at least that will happen 
if at, if nothing else if nothing else um inches wise i did go down an inch in my waist woohoo and a half an inch in my under bust and my hips so my midsection is going down a little bit i did not lose any in my bust which is shocking i'm kind of going what the heck like i don't even know what to think of that and my knees where my lipedema fat is actually got bigger by a half an inch so that was a bummer but you know what they go up and down a lot just for random random things also i know you guys probably noticed my dirty feet on friday morning weigh in i didn't realize that until i was looking through the clips and i was like oh my gosh but the reason why was because i did not have a car to come walk the two miles home from my daughter's school after parent teacher conferences because everybody else had to have the cars on our, we have we are down a car and so i walked home and it was raining and my shoes got soaking wet and my feet apparently got muddy and then I hadn't had my shower yet in the morning before I weighed myself and I just did not even notice. As you can see, I haven't even taken the nail polish off my toes that I don't even know why I put on there because I'm never taking it off. Sorry, I know you guys are thinking those things so I'm just putting it out there that I know. I really know that my feet are scary right now, but whatever, I want it to be real. It's definitely real. Um, as far as calories went, I did okay. I didn't get it as low as I did last week, but I did pretty well. So the calories recap, 1425, 1454, 1393, 1451, 1498, 1451, and then Sunday, I actually did not eat the food that I showed. Um, I couldn't eat it. I only ate, I think, the little bit of the chicken and, I, and ice cream. And so I ended up at 1286 because my adult kids took it upon themselves to, well, I don't want to talk about it, but kind of what I was talking about earlier in the video and I was beating myself up and feeling pretty crappy, so I didn't eat um, as much. So that, you know, brought me down to, to under 1300 for that. So the average for the week was 1423. Um, which is up 57 only from last week. I'm really just trying to keep it as low as possible. I don't have a prescribed number. Like normally I would stick really hard and fast to 1300, but I'm just mentally can't make myself do that. And so my goal is just to eat as little as possible. Thankfully, my hunger is really under control. And like, I mean, yesterday, you saw on Sunday, I didn't even eat till four something. And that was because I just, wasn't hungry and I was really busy getting ready for the party. So, I mean, yay for keto. This remind me of why I did keto to begin with. It's the lack of hunger that keeps me in check because even though I do still want to eat because of my chewing issues, I can control it better because I don't have the anxiety from the hunger. If I have hunger at all, I get extreme anxiety. Like so bad and I have to eat and it's really hard to fight it off. It's so nice to not feel, I forgot about that benefit of keto and as, as much as I don't love a lot of the things of being on keto, that is the one blessing that helps me stay on it longer and that's why it worked because I was able to not have that. So that is blessing. Um, as far as protein goes, I try and keep it 10% in grams of my total calories that way I know it's at least 40% of my diet. That is not customary keto, but it is really good weight loss keto. And so don't let anyone tell you that eating extra protein is gonna kick you out of ketosis. As you'll see from my carb number, ketosis is not key. You can be in ketosis and feel the benefits of keto without actually always hitting those perfect keto numbers and always um, avoiding all things that kick you out of ketosis because the idea is just to keep it low enough that your body runs on fats and if you're not feeling hunger you're there that's just how it is so um 159 was my protein let's not get distracted um, which is higher than my goal which would have been 142 for that calorie range so i'm happy with that number my carbs were a little high 35 um obviously it didn't really do me in any injust injustice in the feeling like I'm in ketosis department. Um, maybe it's a little high, but it is what it is. And then my fats were 61, which is ideal for fair body fat loss because you want your fats to be low and be in ketosis so that your body will eat your body fat instead of your dietary fat, which is where I differ in from most keto people out there. Um, but like I said, I'm no guru. I just, it worked for me and I just tell you it worked for me. Um, I'm not a doctor or whatever. I know they're trying to come down on supposedly YouTube. Oh, I don't know. I saw Dr. Westman talking about YouTube is like cutting down on 
medical advice or something. I don't even know. Sorry, YouTube, but I'm just a person. So I'm not, I'm not telling you any advice. I'm just showing you what worked for me. You can do what you want. Regardless, I was going to talk about something else, but now I can't remember what it was. So that's awkward. Well, my ADHD lack of memory and perimenopausal thing is kicking in because I had a whole other thing I was going to talk about and I literally cannot even fathom what it was. So, oh well, I guess I don't have anything else to say other than thank you for watching and we'll see you all again soon. Oh, and don't forget to watch the 360 coming up now.